The hundreds of people we serve talk about how empowering it is to have help that gives them control over their lives. Their stories, in their own words, will be read by professional actors. It's funny. After going blind, I became much more of a daredevil. It might have something to do with the fact that I can't see what I'm doing. Years ago, I decided I wanted to go skydiving for my 50th birthday. But everybody said, God, I hope she forgets about this. But I didn't forget. The most wonderful thing was that I was tethered to a sighted jumper and as we were floating, floating, floating down, he would describe the scene to me. The trees along the riverbank, the grassy banks, the hills. Oh, it was so beautiful. One night after I'd started grad school at BU, I was out on the prowl with two friends. But as we would say in those days, no action. But they wanted to go to a party out in Arlington, so I went along. It was pretty lively with a lot of people, and that was where I met Daphne. I was in the kitchen with my flask when this very nice young lady came and started popping hors d'oeuvres in my mouth. We got to chatting. Well, we got married seven months after we met. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. The best decision I made was to join a correspondence club when I was 36. A man wrote to me to see if I would like to correspond by tape. A year later, we started dating, and two years later, we got married. He's a disabled veteran, sighted, but he has a nervous disability. He drove trucks at night in France and Belgium, and it was so dark and so scary that it changed him, I guess. He's a good man and a good husband, and we're happy. We never had children, but sometimes my volunteer Sylvia brings over her kids. One time she brought Adam, the youngest one, when he was 10 weeks old. I started talking to him, and that baby took my finger, and he cooed and carried on. Oh, he was adorable. So, of course, I picked him right up, and she read my mail to me while I held him. New life. I've never held a baby that young before. When I met my husband, I had long, long red hair down to here, and he used to love to braid it for me. We got married as soon as I graduated from college. We adopted two teenagers, and I worked part-time. But then my kidney failed again, and my husband decided that he didn't want to deal with it anymore. So after 33 years, he left. It was devastating. I was so dependent on him. When he left, he said, what I suggest is that you move into assisted living and let somebody take care of you and we'll sell the house. And I remember saying, I don't think so. I guess my inner grit came out and I just pulled myself together. A big part of that was getting a MAB volunteer. Patricia is a lifesaver. You know, when you ask a friend or a family member to help, you're putting them on the spot and it makes you feel degraded. You feel beholden. But Patricia comes because Patricia wants to help. She does the kind of things my husband would have done. We put up the Christmas decorations together each year and she helps me buy presents for my grandkids. She's always there for me. I've had volunteers because that's my way of asserting my independence. The one thing you don't want is for your wife to say, why are you buying that? <laughs> because it's my business, that's why. We all have our secrets and we all need our privacy. Up until the early 90s, my wife Daphne paid all the bills. 
But that became a trial, and I, it wasn't helpful to our relationship. So I got a volunteer from MAB to talk over the checkbook and started paying the bills myself. My goal has always been to be self-sufficient. So when I finished high school, I got a job in a cafeteria run by the Agency for the Blind in Montpelier. I was to set up the counters, make the coffee, do the dishes, that kind of thing. Well, one Sunday, the cashier didn't come to work. The girls were frantic. Can you do cash? I said, I don't know the prices, but I'll try. <laughs> People were surprised that I could do it, but I never had any problem. I would listen to what they were ordering and have it all lined up by the time they got to me. I took cash until I left to get married 11 years later. I was working on my doctorate at Harvard and my, my vision just went. I got my first MAB volunteer then and, and she helped me with my graduate work, turning my reading materials into large print. I always thought that Harvard should have given her a degree too. By then, I was using a cane and, and had a hard time finding a job. I was dressing appropriately, a shirt and tie, and I didn't drool when I talked, but I had the cane. I had a Harvard degree, had all the experience, but people couldn't get past the blindness. Finally, I. I got an interview with this little guy who was very quiet but smart as a whip. He hired me. And I remember he told me, I have a son who is blind. He's tried to get a job, but all people can see is his blindness. He tries to get people to look beyond his blindness to see who he is. I know what he can do, and I see what you can do. I worked for state government for 30 years and retired last November, the head of the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Labor. My kidney failed at the same time that I lost my sight. After my transplant, I was feeling so much better and I wanted to find a job. The director of a school in Jamaica Plain told my husband he was looking to hire a reading teacher. And I said to myself, a reading teacher? This should be interesting. So I went in and interviewed and he hired me on the spot. And I said, I don't know if I can do this job and he said, I think you can do this job. So I would follow along in Braille while the child was reading out loud, and it was fine. But the really fun part, the place I had more fun was with the kids who tried to pull things on the blind teacher. Oh my goodness, they could be naughty. One day, I was working with a little boy, and I was darn sure he had something in his mouth. I kept smelling chocolate, so I finally said, Johnny, what have you got in your mouth? He says, nothing. And I said, you'd better stop eating that chocolate until after the lesson. Well, when he left there, was one of his friends out in the hall waiting to come in, and he said to him, she's something. She knew I was eating chocolate, and she can't even see. That was great. I was 76 years old when I lost my vision. And the first thing I did was to call hospitals to try and get a volunteer job, just to do something, because I was going out of my mind. I would be interviewed in depth, and at the end of the conversation, I would say, I think I should tell you that I'm legally blind, and I would never hear from them again. But I finally got a job at MAB, running a support group for people who are losing their vision. I just love it. My volunteer helps me write up the agenda, but let me tell you, I'm still the boss. Two months after the accident, 
I was going skiing every weekend. I felt I could do anything, so I did. I sold insurance and was a community organizer. I managed a theater and worked as a business consultant. And then I was recruited to lead the National Braille Press, which I did for more than 32 years. My team and I transformed the press from a simple Braille job shop into the leading Braille publishing house in the country. I started volunteering because I lived near a school for the blind when I was a kid. And the head of the school, you see, he could tell you the best place in the pond to catch the fish and even identify them for you, even though he was blind. See, I still don't know how he did this, but that stayed with me. The woman I volunteer for was a real leader in the community, and I helped her do that. And I was right up there with her, talking computer and at CNI Dogs. It's great to be a part of, of a support system that can do absolutely everything but see. I just let her in my eyes for a while so she can live the life she wants to live. Listen, I've heard every excuse in my business, and my answer is, before you start feeling sorry for yourself, go out and do something for someone else. Forget about your own problem. Volunteer for someone who had to overcome real challenges. It gives you a perspective on your life. Volunteering for MAB is a huge part of my life. Really, I get more out of it than they do. I'm 81 years old. When I look back at what I've done in my life, this is one of the things I'm most proud of. It's the most important thing I do.